Tubers, Tubets, crazy people. By the title of this video, you might be asking yourself, what the hell is an old married guy that's been with the same woman for over five years doing talking about dating? We leave that up to the other guys on the other YouTube channels, right? Well, it just so happens that I had a conversation yesterday with a couple of guys that are in their 40s, and I'll get into all their details in a minute. Um, but I've also been able, over the years that I've lived here, almost seven now, had countless, countless conversations with gentlemen, either via email, via Facebook Messenger, and tons of guys in person over the year, over the years, that have contacted me. We sat down, and I've heard either their stories of victory or their stories of absolute implosion and defeat. So that's what I'm going to get into in this video. What I have learned through all these conversations as to what I found by observation, my humble opinion, the, what I think works the best in both a long-distance relationship using an app, an LDR, and face-to-face boots on the ground, meeting women in person. In fact, I've got one little nugget that when I shared it with the two guys I was chatting with, they said, that is brilliant. So here comes my little video where I'm going to share my little nuggets of knowledge. All right. Well, alrighty. As I mentioned in the little introduction there, I had the opportunity yesterday to meet up with a couple of guys in their 40s that I've met before, hung out with before, and they are now currently back in Dumaguete simultaneously. So we all got together yesterday. One of them is Chad Foster. He has a YouTube called Chad Foster Explores. And the other one is Scotty Boy from the YouTube channel Regular Guy. So we had a lot in common just with the YouTube thing. We had very little in common with our age. And I must say that I am kind of living vicariously through the two of them because they are young enough, agile enough to get up and move about the, all of the islands in the Philippines that they can possibly hit. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're going from island to island, city to city, barangay to barangay. And both of them are kind of on a similar quest or mission in that they are looking for the place. Uh, they want to walk into a city like the way I walked into Dumaguete and I just said, okay, this is good. This works for me. Well, Dumaguete obviously isn't for everybody. So they are testing the waters. They're going here and they're going there. I admire that. I wish I could have done that too, but it is what it is, right? The second thing, and what the primary thrust of this whole video is about, is they are both sincerely on a mission and have the hope that they can meet somebody that they can sincerely fall in love with and that they can sincerely just have a monogamous, long-term, till death do us part type of relationship. And not unlike me, they've had some false starts along the way. <laughs> I did it, they've done it. Met one, thought it was great, but guess what? None of those relationships, Scotty, Chad, myself, stood the test of time. After a period of weeks, months, I don't, I don't pretend to know the other guys' situations. For me, it was a couple of months. I just looked at her and I asked myself this question. Can I see myself with this woman in five years? And until I met up with my now wife, May, the answer was always no. And when I met her, the answer was yes. And one of those two dudes quoted me on that in a previous conversation. I can't remember which one said it, but they said, or he said, you know what, Paul, what I want? I want what you've got. I want to have just found the one that I can say yes to and settle down in the town that I'm comfortable in. So, with that being said, I started chatting with them about their dating styles, their techniques, if they had a technique or what they did, 
and a lot of it was very hit and miss. But the one thing that I think is the primary thrust is that there's two ways to meet somebody. It's either online, using an app, maybe you're not even here, uh, you're in America, for example, and you're chatting with somebody. Um, and I've always been not a big proponent of that, but I imagine it's fine as long as you don't send a lot of money to somebody or get hurt financially. I just heard a horror story three or four days ago, and this is one of about, I don't know how many, 50, 60 horror stories that I've heard, where one guy just got planned for about 8,000 US dollars. And he was sending this woman this money, and she was supposedly gonna be moving, using the money to get an apartment or a house and furnishing it and doing this and doing that and rah, rah, rah. And two days before he was to get on the flight, I think he's here now, um, and I haven't met him. This is a third party story, <laughs> a guy that knows a guy. Um, she ghosted him two days before he was supposed to get here. Profile's gone, she's disappeared, and not the first time that I've heard of people doing this. What they will do is create a profile They'll put on a persona, they'll put up a certain profile pic. It may not even be them. That probably is if they're, if they're Skyping, video chatting. But, um, and glean what they can from that individual. And then when the rubber hits the road and they may have to meet this person, boom, they're gone. They wait a while. They come up with a different profile on a different site and start the rodeo all over again. And those are the stories that I hate to hear. So I was talking to Chad Foster about this, and I said, hey, can I have your permission to share this information? And he said, sure. Because I said, what are you doing? He says, well, I do do that. I do use apps. And I said, okay. And he says, in fact, he says, I'm going to Bacolod. That's my next trip. That's where he's off to. Scotty's off to Sikihor. Chad, he's off to Bacolod. And I said, so you're going to Bacolod because? He said, well, number one, I want to check it off or on my list as to a place that I would consider staying. I haven't seen it with my own eyes yet. Scotty and I gave him our opinions of Pacolid because we've both been there, but we'll just leave it at that. Let him see with his own ears eyes. And he says, but actually what I'm doing is I'm meeting up with a woman over there that I met online. And he says, and she... I'm hoping, just might be the one. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't, won't know till I get there. And I said, well, how did you meet her? He said, well, I used Christian Filipina. And I said, you're about the fourth or fifth guy that I've talked to that's used Christian Filipina and seems to like that app. Are you associated with them? He said, yeah, I, I am, and I've got their app. And believe it or not, I met this woman through the app and I'm going out there, and I'm going to be meeting her in, I don't know, two or three days, whatever long it takes for him to get out there. So he's got some sort of stop in between. And I said, what is it about this Christian Filipina that you like? And the way he explained it to me was this. He said, listen, Paul, nothing's perfect. There are ups and downs with everything. I said, I agree. He said, but if this is the most popular app, and I won't use its name because that wouldn't be fair, that's being used right now, and he would know because he's in the scene. I've been out of the scene forever. Uh, here it is, and this is Christian Filipina. He says, this app here, and he thought about it for a minute, he would say, I would say seven out of ten women that I chat with are full of it. They're either asking for money or giving me some sob story, and maybe three out of the ten seem like, reality, that they're not out to get something from you. He says, over here, here's the old one, over here on the Christian Filipina app, he said I would reverse those numbers. That it's not perfect, but seven out of ten are reality. And there are some layers of protection that this app has, has instilled to help protect you know, caveat emptor, buyer beware, to help me navigate it. And so if there's a, 
He, and he says, app, he says, profiles disappear. He says, I'll open up the app one day and Mary will be there and I'll open it up the next day and she's gone. And I go, why is that? And he said, well, probably, he didn't know for sure, but he said probably because she's met someone. And so if they do meet somebody and they're no longer on the market, there's definitely no reason to keep them on the app. So you wouldn't be wasting your time with somebody that's already got a boyfriend and might still consider talking to you for the aforementioned reasons. And he says, or they do screen people. He said, I have had people previously that have hit me up for money and whatnot. But with the Christian Filipina, you can call them and you can say, hey, um, so-and-so is giving me a story or asking me for money. And that might be cause for removal. So he said, his words, I like the odds much better on the Christian Filipina app than the others, the one that's really popular and others involved. So I said, all right, right on. I'll throw a link in for it and see what happens. Um, then we went on to meeting people in person. And... I asked him about those experiences, and Scotty's so funny, because he, I go, how's it going, Scotty? He goes, oh, the baby Roonies, they all hate me. <laughs> and Chad, well, that's just Scotty, and Chad said, uh, he said, yeah, you know, he says, I mean him, but like me, and actually like Scott, I'm assuming also, a little uncomfortable approaching somebody. A lot of times the language barrier, the situation doesn't really um, bear the, you know, it's not the, it's not the greatest setup in the world. You're in the middle of this or in the middle of that or she's busy or with a lot of friends. So it's, it can get complicated to try to just meet somebody one-on-one -on -one unless you were in a situation like a bar, which is really not a great place to meet a woman. I can certainly attest to that. And so... The reason I can attest to that, I'm going to tell you a story. I have never, ever, ever been one, a guy that can just walk up to a woman and, and in any situation and be like, you know, hey, baby, <laughs> you know, the blah, blah, blah. I don't have those lines. I've, I can't do it. It's just not in me. Believe it or not, when it comes to that situation, I am very introverted and shy. I just could never, ever bring myself to do that. I've never done it once since I've been here in the Philippines. Of all the females that I've encountered or dated or and now with, has been through other people um, intervening, I guess, or introducing me to them. That can take a long time, especially if you don't know a lot of people. So I have a great little nugget that a guy shared with me, but first I'm going to get back to my own experience real quick. Something got burned into my brain 30 years ago, minimum, maybe, oh, 40 years ago or more. I was at a place called the Red Onion in Encino, California. I was maybe 23 or 24 years old. I was with my friend Casey who was also my roommate. Now, Casey never had any problem meeting women. He was really a good-looking guy. He could dance. He had all the, the, he just knew what to do. He was just one of those guys. Um, me, I was the complete opposite. <laughs> Which I'm sure isn't hard to believe. And so, if you know me at all, you're saying, yeah, I can see that, Paul. <laughs> So anyway, him and I are at this place called the Red Onion. And he knew I was always kind of shy and insecure. And he's always trying to push me out into the world a little bit. And so we were there and I saw this woman and she was sitting at the bar by herself and she was having a drink. And I said, wow, I says, you know, that woman over there is cute. And he says, yeah, she is pretty, Paul. Why don't you go over and talk to her? And I go, you know, Casey, I'm not one of those guys. I don't have the cool lines or anything like that. I just stumble over myself. He goes, well, I'll tell you what you do. Just go over there and ask her if she wants to dance. I said, well, the only problem with that is, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm about a 2 when it comes to dancing. 
He goes, don't I know it? I've seen you try. <laughs> he says, but at least you can go over there and just ask her if she would like to dance and you kind of know where you stand with her. And I said, okay, fair enough. So I did that. I walked across the bar and there was an empty space next to this woman. And I went over and I said, excuse me, um, my name's Paul. I don't know if you're here by yourself or what the dynamic is, something to these effect. I don't remember exactly. I said, but would you like to dance um, when the next song comes up? And instead of saying something like, oh, thanks for asking, but no, I'm here with my friends, or I'm just getting ready to leave, or no, I don't feel like dancing right now, but thanks for asking. She didn't say that, no. What did she say? Well, first of all, what she did was I said, would you like to dance? Well, she drew back, and she looked me down and up, and then up and down, and just scoped me from top to bottom. And she leaned into me and she said, in your wildest dreams would I dance with you. And just turned and went back to sipping her white Russian or whatever the hell it was she was having. Whew. Well, I can tell you right now, the emotion humiliation had its finest moment with Uncle Polly right then and there. And not only that, I had to do the walk of shame back through all the cocktail tables back to my friend Casey so I could go cry in my beer and tell him my sad story. Ever since that experience, it affected and impacted me and my self-esteem, nothing else, so deeply that I said I'm never going to ever subject myself to that ever again. And never once, here in the Philippines, back in the States, have I ever approached a woman directly and tried to hit on her or ask her out. Just not, not going to happen. Um, the opposite is true here, where women have actually approached me and have kind of made themselves, let it be known that they were interested or whatever. But that's neither here nor there. So... I told the guys, I said, how is, how is, what do you guys do when you approach them? And they, again, they agreed. They said, boy, it's complicated, man, because, you know, the language, and I think I already covered all that. And I said, can I tell you something that a guy did when I first got here? And I saw him, and then I saw his girlfriend. And when I, I tell you this, I mean it with all my heart. This woman that he was with was not just beautiful. She was, and I'm sure still is, this is over five, six years ago, she was strikingly beautiful. She was someone that when she walked down the street, men, women, stray dogs <laughs> would turn and look at her. She was just amazing. And then I looked at him, and he was almost as ugly as me, and he had a big pot belly, and he wasn't necessarily the neatest pin, and or the nicest, or the, or the, he didn't have a great personality, and yet she was hanging on to him for dear life. And as far as I know, they're still together. Um, they left the island a couple, three years ago for greener pastures, and I haven't heard or seen from them since, but she was just the proverbial diamond in the rough. And I asked him, I said, dude, you have got to tell me, how did you meet her? <laughs> I'm sure people say that when they see me with me, like, how did that guy meet her? What's, the, what's going on? Anyway, he had what I thought was the most brilliant strategy, if you want to call it that, to meet people, females, women of the, of the, people of the opposite sex, sorry. And when I told Scotty, and when I told Chad, they both went, wow, I'm doing that. That is amazing. Here's what he did. He went and had business cards made. And front and back of the business card had his name and his phone number. Done. End of story. 
No emblems, no titles, no nothing, no email, just his name and his phone number. And what he did, this is how he met this woman. This woman was walking through Robinson's in the outside court. And I remember that story precisely. She was walking in the outside court. It was her first time in Dumaguete. She had lived out in the province, and her job was breaking rocks with her arm. She made 50 pesos a day. And this was her first tr big trip to the big city with two of her friends. I didn't know all this before. He told me after the fact. And they were walking towards him. And as he got up to them, he simply said, excuse me, and to the, to the woman that, he was, that I just said is so stunningly beautiful. He said, excuse me, I'm single. If you'd like to hang out sometime, that's my name and number. And then he ran, he didn't run, but he, then he would walk away immediately. And when I told Chad and when I told Scotty that, they went, wow. Because we were all able to unpack it for what it was. And more importantly, it's not what he did. And this is where I, I really paid attention. It's what he didn't do. When you, if I was to walk up, let's say I was single tomorrow, and I had these cards, and I saw a woman, and I said, Hi, I'm single, and if you'd like to hang out sometime, that's my name and number. And I've just given her a business card. And she might be with two or three different girls. And then I just walk away. Well, the first thing that she's going to do is turn around, and all the girls are going to get together and go, burr, 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 and they're going to chat, and they might just take it and tear it up and throw it away. All right, no harm, no foul, right? My feelings didn't get hurt because I'm walking away. I don't know what she did with it. Number two, there is no pressure on the woman. There's nothing, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. A guy went up, handed her a business card, which most people don't have to begin with, so that's kind of an up, and it's got all the information. I'm single. Obviously, I'm a foreigner. I'm single. If you want to hang out, that's my number. Do you want to date? Not do you want to come to my place? Not do you want to do this? Not do you it's so benign and so harmless. And girls out here, I should say women out here, my wife included, they love nothing more than the friggin' text. They live on these freaking phones, man. Text, 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 text. And I asked him later on, I said, how many business cards would you hand out? He said, well, if it was really crowded and I saw a lot of women that I found attractive, I would hand out maybe 10. And he said, I got 100% return. There was never one that didn't at least text me and say hi. Of course, a lot of them didn't go anywhere from there. But the one with the one woman that he saw that was just so gorgeous, they actually hit it up and became a couple. Let's take it to another situation, if you will. Let's say I'm, and this is what I was telling Chad, and this is what I was telling Scotty, and they're nodding their heads like this, like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Takes a lot of pressure off of, of me as an individual, as the guy. Takes all the pressure off of the woman. But um, I'll give you two examples, and we'll leave it at that, and we'll call it a video. Let's say I'm in line at 7-Eleven, and I am attracted to the young lady that is the cashier and she's checking me out I would never I wouldn't make any small talk with her or try to be cool or do any of that kind of jazz that's associated with you know quote unquote picking up somebody or impressing someone we'll just be polite wait for her to finish if she said hello sir I would say hello miss how are you fine good Maybe a little chit chat if she's instigating it get my groceries, get whatever I'm buying, pay the money, get my change, put it in my pocket, grab my bag and take the card and say, hey, by the way, I'm single. And if you'd like to hang out sometime, maybe you can give me a call or a text and walk out the store. She's had, she's not put in the position to say yes or no. What if I had, let's go backwards. Let's just say, hey, I said, are you single? Are you, do you like foreigners? You know, I got a lot of money. 
uh, bu -bu 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 -bu, the usual suspects that people guy or I see guys do over and over and over again. And all you're doing is creating an uncomfortable situation. What if the woman's got a coworker there and she's listening to it? And after you eventually leave, after making a fool of yourself, uh, they're going to... And now you've got this reputation as a chick boy or whatever. With a business card, you're simply increasing your odds. You are simply... It's a numbers game, is what I said to the guys. And I still, I still stand by that. If, if you're in America right now and you're married or divorced, let's just say you're divorced, was your wife, or your now ex-wife, was she the first girl and only girl that you ever dated? I don't think so. You had girlfriends, I'm assuming, in high school, college, work, you know, as you go through life, maybe you got on Match.com or whatever they used back there and met somebody. But no, it is a numbers game, and I don't mean body count. I just mean introductions. I mean just talking to people having the opportunity to meet somebody that you normally wouldn't. A big stumbling block here. I just talked to May's sister. I said, why haven't you talked to more foreigners? She says, because I'm scared of my English. Well, guess what? Women out here are not afraid of their English if they're texting because they're not having to speak. And it gives you the opportunity You've met her in person. She's seen you in person. So that's taken out of the equation. Everybody knows what everybody looks like. Um, and you're texting and getting to know. And maybe at that point in time, now you can get together and have you know, a beverage or whatever it is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in touch. Um, Scotty's got business cards. Chad, I don't know if he's going to get business cards or not because he's going to meet a particular woman already when he goes to Macaulay. But I'm going to stay in touch with those guys and see what they say. And if it was me and I was you and you hung in me this long in the video, maybe you want to check out their channels and see how their little, their little, what their dynamics are and what their situations are and how it's going for them over there. All right. Well, once again, I want to just thank you for watching. I also want to take one minute, if you actually are still here at the end of the video, which is rare, but for all the people that have subscribed lately, I really, really do appreciate it. It's, it's, it's nice to see. It's heartwarming. I appreciate you joining me on my little journey here in the Philippines. All right, boys and girls, I will see you in the next video.